glad to have you with us today. Uh, we've got some great weather. I see you're talking about uh, the rain finally stopping where you are, Shelby, and it's drying out. That's great. Um, I spent uh, quite a bit of time recently at the, at the farm looking around and seeing new lambs. Uh, and actually, so today we're going to talk more about farm animals. We're going to talk about pigs specifically. And I'll tell you where we're going with that. Um, so up until this point of the semester, you haven't done outlining for mm, 10 or 12 weeks. You've really been focusing on learning a new topoi and applying them to your own writing. Well, we're going to sort of flip around a little bit. We're going to look at some, uh, some examples of some great writing, and we're going to see how these writers structure their compositions. And so from there, in outlining that, you're able to then write your own composition. So we're sort of standing on the shoulders of giants, so to speak. Uh, there is on page, if you turn with me to page 291 in your books. Uh, so we're actually going to read something by Benjamin Franklin, and he makes a really great case for why we would want to learn from other great writers um, and model our own work on them. Yeah, I, I, I like Benjamin Franklin too, Melissa. Uh, could I get a volunteer to read that? It's that passage on page 291. Nathan, would you go ahead? About this time, I met with an odd volume of The Spectator. It was the third. I had never before seen any of them. I bought it, read it over and over, and was much delighted with it. I thought the writing excellent and wished, if possible, to imitate it. With this view, I took some of the papers and, making short hints of the sentiments in each sentence, uh, laid them by a few days, and then, without looking at the book, I tried to complete the papers again by expressing each hinted sentiment at length as fully as it had been expressed before in any suitable words that should come to hand. Then I compared my spectator with the original, discovered some of my faults, and corrected them. By comparing my work afterwards with the original, I discovered many faults and amended them, but I sometimes had the pleasure of fancying that, in certain particulars of small import, I had been lucky enough to improve the method or the language, and this encouraged me to think I might possibly in time become come to be a tolerable English writer, of which I was extremely ambitious. Thank you, Nathan. So what I'd like you to do, let's take this wisdom from Benjamin Franklin, and let's look at uh, the composition by Grace Reese. So Grace Reese, uh, she wrote A Brother of St. Francis. Uh, here she actually defends pigs. So uh, this is quite interesting. You guys already read this for your homework. I asked you, as you read, if you would try and um, record or make note of any vocabulary that was new to you or something that you used in context or that, that she used in context that you weren't really clear on. And we'll talk about that because we need to be clear on what she's saying before we can really outline and figure out what her sentiment is behind each each sentence. So let's start with the first um, three paragraphs. Do you all have any questions? You can either uh, raise your hand and speak or I'm happy to, to take any questions that you have in the chat. Okay, Justin. Oh, what is Bluebird's Chamber? Very good. Okay, so that is, let's see if I can find it in the, in the passage. That is, it's in the third paragraph, right in the middle. So Bluebeard has, it's, he's kind of a, a not very nice guy. Uh, and let's see. So uh, it's from a French fairy tale, and Bluebeard, he's actually a nobleman. He, wear, he marries wife after wife after wife, and he kills each one. So sorry, guys, I know it's gruesome. And he puts all their bodies in a small chamber in his castle, and he, he closes it and he locks it. He gives the key to his most recent wife, and he tells her not to open the door. So it's, it's almost, you guys can also think about like a Pandora's box. Um, so of course, you tell someone not to do something, what do they do? They do it. So she takes the key, she opens the chamber, and she discovers 
the very, very worst possible thing about her new husband. Um, yeah, actually, Jeff, I, I think he did give a key to every, every wife he had. And so each wife um, got in trouble because of her curiosity. I guess curiosity killed the cat. Yeah, well, again, it's not a very nice story. Um, but in this case, now that you guys know what a bluebird, Bluebeard's chamber is, it's a subject that you really don't want to think about or investigate because of what might happen. Yeah. So we, the readers, we know what's going to happen to the wife as soon as she opens the door. We have that knowledge, so we don't want to investigate what's going on. Um, you guys might be more familiar with something like a can of worms. Yeah, it does seem foolish, but yeah, Nathan, think about the last time your mom or dad told you not to do something. Chances are really good you still went ahead and, and tried it out. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Justin. Uh, let's see. So Nathan asked about Christian socialism. Uh, Nathan, can we come back to that? That's actually on the on the next page. And we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. Great. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Shelby, you had a question. Was it on the first page about vocabulary? Yes. All right, Shelby, go ahead. So in the third paragraph, she talked about how people would scamp their thinking. What does that mean? Ooh, to scamp their thinking. Good question. So it's sort of to, to do something carelessly or in a hurry. Um, you know, you're not very thorough, so you avoid, yeah, to avoid thinking through things very carefully. They scamp their thinking. All right. Anything else from that first page? No? Okay, let's go on to the second page then, and that actually includes uh, Nate's question about what Christian socialism is. Uh, are any of you guys, have you, have you taken any history classes where you've talked about that? Otherwise, I'm happy to define that for you all. No? Okay. So Christian socialism, it's a part of a political movement, and in its socialism, which is the idea that wealth gets shared equally among all people, it's based on the, on the teachings of Jesus, so kind of like the way that his disciples lived. By talking about Christian socialism here, Reese is saying that the best people turn senseless and rave at the mention of it because they are greedy or they're desperate to keep control of their own wealth, just like a pig might try to keep control of his own food. Um, so this was a major movement in Britain in the 19th century, and Reese lived at that time. She was born in 1865, so she would have been very familiar with Christian socialism at that point. Nathan, does that answer your question about uh, both what Reese means by Christian socialism and how she's using it? If there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and, and we'll move on to the next part of the, the exercise with outlining. Are you guys ready for that? Great. Okay. Ah, great. And I see some smiley faces there. It looks like you guys are all ready for the next, the next part of this. Okay. So I've got a few questions for you before we start outlining a brother of St. Francis. In outlining the essay, we're going to make sure that we understand the overall form and the overall meaning of her essay, a brother of St. Francis. So we're going to answer three questions. I've got them up here on the board. What technique does Grace Reese use in the essay? What is she telling us about pigs? And finally, what is she telling us about ourselves? So I want you guys to take a minute. Um, you guys can, can use the chat or use the microphone. And let's see what we can bring together. I'm going to record what you say up on the board, and then we'll come up with an overall statement about what Reese is doing. All right. So. What technique does Reese use in the essay? If you guys are to look back at the different topoi that we've learned, there's one big technique that she's using. Oh, wow, Nathan, that's great. So Grace is using a point by point compare and contrast method. So yeah, the overall method is compare and contrast. And then she's going point by point and comparing um, something about pigs, a negative attribute that people see about pigs, and then comparing it to what's going on with people. 
And yep, Shelby, you're right. Exactly. She's comparing pigs and people. Um, so do, do pigs come out favorably? They do. Yeah. And what about people? Jeff, you made the point. Sometimes it's hard to tell what she likes more. Yeah. Do people come off very well in this essay? People seem pretty bad. <laughs> Shelby, yeah, she does. She makes pigs sound uh, bad, but then the people are also pretty bad. Hmm. Yeah, Nathan, good point. So people, people who act like pigs should probably know better. All right, so let's see. You guys did a great job with number one. It's a comparison and contrast. And you even identify that it was a point by point, meaning she takes one point talking about pigs and then one point and she, she explores that with people. Great. So what is she telling us about pigs? Pigs, pigs aren't necessarily that bad maybe. By the end, did you guys want a pet pig maybe or think that they weren't as bad as, as they're made out to be? Uh, I think she's telling us that they're misunderstood. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Okay, I'm just putting up some of those great points that you guys have in your chat. Yeah, that's a great point, Jeff. Um, when, really when they're in mud they're they're actually getting clean and they're they're trying to stay um, stay hydrated it's not because they're dirty yeah pigs are less calculating than humans so what is she saying to us about ourselves ah <laughs> yeah Melissa you're right the last paragraph makes pigs sound really great but their pets. They want to go for a walk on the beach. I wouldn't mind knitting with a with a pig behind me. She says we all behave like animals. Yeah. And that we're looking down on them. Ah, both cold cunning. And that's a nice use of Reese's words to support your point, Melissa. She uses that we we have cold cunning. So we're worse. Ah, we are mean to each other, but we say that we're better than animals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Jeff, great point um, that you see what, what Shelby's saying. Um, we shouldn't think that think that pigs are bad just because you know we're we're just as bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great! Well done, guys. All right, I'll try and clean up my slides a little bit, but you can see here um, we've just organized your your thoughts according to what you're answering. Yeah, Justin, do you have a question or a comment? Oh, what does the title mean? Great question. So St. Francis is, is a monk who is renowned for his love of animals and his compassion towards them. He really treated them uh, like, like brothers, like human beings. Um, sometimes if, if you go maybe for a walk in your neighborhood, you'll see there's a, a man in a robe and he's holding out like a little bowl and people put bird seed in it or maybe it's a, a bird bath. That's a statue of St. Francis. And it represents... Um, how much he loved animals and how much he cared for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you guys did a great job giving a summary of the overall composition. Oh, Shelby, I'll see you uh, next time I'm on a walk. I'll try and get a picture of one and I'll, I'll share it with you guys in class. Okay. <laughs> So you guys now have a great understanding of the overall, you know, what, what Reese is going for. So now we're going to take this a step further and we're going to break it down and figure out 
what uh, Reese is doing specifically. So what I have for us here, we're going to do a two level outline. You guys are familiar with that. So we're going to break down the composition into one, two, three, four sections. We're going to start with the introduction and then the two main things that Reese does in that introduction. Then we're going to look specifically at the pig and look at those two things. In the third, a comparison of pig and man it goes all the way to F and then we have the conclusion with A and B. So if you all would turn with me to page, this is on page 294 of your books. So what we have there, the whole composition, the whole essay has been uh, given back to us, but there's a little bullet sign and that bullet sign breaks up the sections. So we're going to focus on at the top of 295, we have the introduction. There are one, two, three paragraphs there. And in those two, uh, sorry, in those three paragraphs, there are two points that Reese makes, the A and the B. So let's see about how this, how this goes, shall we? All right, the, the, the first three paragraphs, this is the first thing that the reader sees. Um, you guys learned how to do this in what, week six. Do you guys remember what that's called with the introduction? You might need to look back at your introduction reference page. What sort of introduction does this most closely resemble? How does we start the, the introduction? Yeah, it's an anecdote. What, what's the anecdote that she's telling us? What's the story? Can someone summarize that for us? It's about her snotty friend, yeah. She's not particularly kind towards pigs. Her friend, her friend didn't like hippos? Well, Reese, it's a personal story and Reese doesn't like hippos. And then Reese, Reese says this and her friend goes, oh, well, you don't even have to look that far. Look at a pig. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan's being diplomatic. That's true. All right. So she tells an anecdote. And how does she conclude that introduction? She uses another type of introduction there. What tool is she using? Yeah, she says we shouldn't be afraid to look at the scary things in life. Yeah, so exactly, Shelby. She's giving us a command. She's telling the reader what, what to do or, or how to begin thinking about it. And she uses a metaphor as well. Nathan, what, what metaphor is she using there? The bluebeard metaphor, yeah. So we don't have to worry about opening up the chamber. And don't worry, guys, I, I'll keep you safe. Mm-hmm. Better go boldly in and see what hangs by the wall. Yes. Well, in the end, I think Bluebird's, uh, Bluebeard's, uh, Bluebird. <laughs> Bluebeard's uh, final wife makes it out okay, which is why we know about Bluebeard's chamber. All right, great. So there are two main things that Reese is doing in this introduction. She's using an anecdote, uh, a personal anecdote, uh, to introduce the topic, and then she's giving a command to the reader. Now that she's given that command to the reader, she's going to take us into our composition. So that second section, and this guys, it's on the middle of 295. There are two more paragraphs. So it's between the, the two sort of target symbols. These first, these, these two paragraphs in the middle of the page, they talk about the pig. So for A, what aspect of the pig does the first paragraph describe? What he looks like, his face, he seems friendly. Yeah. Great. Now I'm just double checking. You all have access to the board. So let's see. Um, Justin, would you write under A? You can click on the, the text button up at the top of the screen. Under A, would you write appearance?
Great. And then if you can't move that, Justin, I'll go ahead and I'll move that for you. Great, I'll take care of that. So there we go, nice. Yeah, point A, it's all about his appearance. What he looks like, he seems friendly. He's actually got a, a nice countenance. And now let's look at that second paragraph there. What part of the pig's experience does the second paragraph describe? He loves mud. Yeah, Shelby, would you, would you put mud under, under B for us? Great, thank you, Shelby. Great, so she covers two things with the pig, his appearance, his love of mud, and then she moves into the comparison. So that will start at the bottom of page 295, if you look there with me, um, starting with that final target. It starts with, he is dirty, people say, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs and actually each paragraph covers a separate point in her comparison of pig and man. So someone made the point earlier, it's, it's a comparison and contrast, and specifically it's a point by point comparison and contrast. So each paragraph is dedicated to a specific point, and that's what we're going to look at now. So in this comparison of pig and man, let's look at that first paragraph. And let's see, Shelby, could I have you read that? He is dirty, people say. He's dirty, people say. Nay, is he as dirty, or at least as complicated in his dirt, as his brother man can be? Let those who know the dens of London give the answer. Leave the pig to himself, and he is not so bad. He knows his mother mud is cleansing. He rolls partly because he loves her, and partly because he wishes to be clean. Great, thank you, Shelby. So, um, what there, what characterizes both the pig and the dens of London, sort of the the seedier, less pleasant underside of London. What point is she making there? They're both filthy, they're dirty, yeah. Melissa, would you write that dirty under point A? Yeah, so she makes the point exactly, Shelby. They're both dirty, but the pig's dirt isn't as bad, actually. So who comes out better there, the pig or people? Oh, there we go. Thanks, Melissa. Here, I'll take care of that. All right. Nice. All right, so paragraph one, it's all about things being dirty. Great. What about paragraph two, if we scan that? The last thing that we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to just look at this conclusion and talk about the type of conclusion that Reese is using. She's using a variation of a, of a conclusion that we've seen before. So you guys remember, when we think back to introduction, and that Reese used an anecdote in the introduction, we're going to think about how she, how she ends this. What type of a conclusion is in the first paragraph? So guys, this is on 296. We have one paragraph, conclusion by personal reaction. She does another command. Okay, guys, I, I, I want you to help me parse this out. Nathan, can you read to me the section um, that shows that this is a conclusion by personal reaction? Would you read those sentences to me? Oh, your mic is having trouble? Okay. You can paste them. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Nathan. And Nathan, while you're doing that, Shelby, are you able to, to tell us what the command is? What command is Reese giving us? Reese says that we should not be disgusted by the pig because they are our brother and we are just as gross as they are. Yeah, the, exactly. The pig is our good little brother. All right. So Shelby made the point. She picked the B talking about it's a command. Mm hmm. And then Nate made the point, and I'm going to go back up to where Nate typed in his. It's a conclusion by personal reaction. So let's look at what Nate is calling the conclusion by personal reaction. He's, he picked out the quote, and he's, he's supporting it 
All right, so to read what Nathan has said, no, he has none of our cold cunning. He's all simplicity. I'm told it is possible to love him. I know a kindly French woman who takes her pig for an airing, and then he tells us great, she tells us great story about the, the pig walking on the beach. Great, and that's a personal reaction and a, a sort of an anecdote. So Jeff asks, could we say that pigs are just as nice as we are? Or nicer, thinks Nathan. Do you guys agree? Jeff makes a great point. It's not their fault. They aren't calculating. They're just the way that their creator made them. What do you guys think? Do pigs deserve their bad rap? Yeah, they're doing just what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Melissa says she's never met a pig, but she makes them sound nice. I think so. Hmm. All right. Piglets are very sweet. They are. Ah, I guess you've met one, Jeff. They should be treated better. Yeah. Could could make an interesting argument for vegetarianism, I suppose. It makes me wonder if, if Reese were one. Guys, I want to look at that command just a little bit closer because um, Shelby was absolutely right. She said she eats bacon <laughs> in the story. It is pretty delicious. Well, I guess she likes pigs, but not enough to, uh, to avoid meat altogether. So Shelby, I want to conclude with, with the point that you made. It's really nice. You talked about it being a command that Reese gives us. And I want to point out uh, we haven't actually learned about a command as being a conclusion of a composition, but the command is a variation of a conclusion that we've already looked at. It's a variation of conclusion by question. So Reese is actually answering the question to us about how we should react to the pig. Nice. Well done. All right. Do any of you guys have uh, any concluding reactions to this? Anything that you want to share with the, with the class about this composition? Yes. Well, you have to read in order to be able to write. Otherwise, if you're just writing, you're kind of stuck, aren't you? You have to figure out how to do it. Shelby asks, do you think she could have done this with any other animals? Yes, Shelby. And in fact, in your assignment for this week, you get to write a point-by-point -point comparison of two things. Um, so if you want to try it with other animals, you absolutely can. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in the next class, but yeah, you'll see how it goes. Uh, think twice before judging others. Nathan, I think that's a good moral. Yeah. I appreciate Reese's insight. I don't know that I would have picked up on everything. Um, which which does make me think about my own actions, definitely. And Melissa, you want to read Bluebeard's Chamber. Uh, we'll find some fairy tales for you. Yeah, Shelby, you could do a dog. Right. All right. Well, thank you all for a great class, and I'll see you on Wednesday.